this video, I'm going to show you how you can bottle your own homemade wine. So let's get started now. Hey social adventurers, today I'm going to show you a little, something a little bit different. Um, this is going to be part of a Get to Know Us series where you get to know uh, Felicia Ann and myself beyond the modeling and the cars and the things that we normally do on YouTube. Uh, so this is going to be a special series on uh, other hobbies and stuff. And one of my hobbies that I've done in the past is winemaking. So today I'm going to show you how you bottle wine. And uh, if this video does well, I'm going to show you how to actually make wine. So make sure you hit that like button. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Now, in order to bottle your wine, there's a few things that you need. One is a carboy wine that you've made. A carboy is this right here. Uh, basically, it looks like the water jug you put on a water fountain. Um, however, it's five gallons and it's glass, not plastic. The next thing you're going to need are bottles. Now, the bottles, there are a couple different types and a couple different kinds. It all depends on what you want. But traditionally, red wine is in a green bottle, a dark green bottle, and usually a Bordeaux bottle, but not always. And white wine is typically in either a light green or a clear bottle. Now, in order to get started, you're going to need, it's going to depend on how large your carboy is. The carboy we're using today will be 25, uh, I'm sorry, get 5 gallons, so 25 bottles, or thereabout. There could be more or less. Um, so you're going to need 20, I have 24 of the dark green because we're going to bottle a red wine today. And then I always do one clear one. Now, the clear one is so that I bottle one clear so you can see the sediment. As it ages, you can see what's going on with it. Um, that's a personal preference. It's not something you need to do. Next, you're going to need corks. Now, there are a couple different types of corks. I'm using a synthetic cork. You can also use a natural cork. Uh, the difference between them is, is a synthetic cork is easier to put into a bottle than a, a, um, uh, a natural cork. I do have some natural corks. Um, however, I've had them for quite a long time. I don't want to use them. I don't know if they've dried out or anything of that nature. So, But they're more difficult to compress and get into the bottle. Um, so I'm opting with the synthetic for this uh, round. Also, you're going to need... A siphon. Um, this is a special siphon that actually goes into the carboy. Um, it has a cap on it and then some tubing to go along with it. Also you're going to need to sanitize all of your equipment and that's going to require uh, a cleanser. I use One Step Cleanse No Rinse. Uh, this is something that it's really easy to use. You just do one tablespoon per gallon of warm water when you're you're making your you're washing your bottles um, and you just go ahead and put these in hot water and you'll see as we go through it but this cleanses it you don't have to worry about rinsing you're also going to need uh, something like this and this is what this does is it's a it's a it corks so you're going to sit there and you're going to put a cork in you're going to compress it down into the bottle so this adds the the corks to the bottle there are some floor stands, which one day I may, I do really like, but maybe I'll be able to do that. And the other thing that I have, it's not required, but it does make your life a lot easier, is a bottle tree. The bottle tree, simply after your bottles are washed, it allows them to put them on and dry. Now, now that we have everything and I've gone over what you need to bottle your wine, let's get started. First step into bottling wine is to make sure you sanitize everything. So, uh, what I'm going to do, you want to rinse out your sink very well and clean it best you can. You do not want soap suds or anything in there. I just did my dinner dishes, so I need to make sure I get everything out. And then you're going to fill it with hot water, as hot as you can stand it. I'm filling up my sink with uh, extremely hot water. I actually will get it as hot as I can, and I'll deal with that later. Um, and then I'm going to use my 
One Step Cleanser. Now, everything I use will be down in the description below so that you can uh, get anything that, you know, if you need any of these equipment, you want to start doing it on your own, you can find it. Um, but, you know, like I said, there is a, um, it is one tablespoon per gallon. I'm using about a gallon. I'm just going to kind of eyeball a tablespoon. You just need to be close. I don't know how much water is actually going to be in there, uh, but it'll get the gist of it. All right, so you see, it'll just actually, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, you're just going to put a bunch of water. Remember, I got, I have to uh, put bottles in there now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to tell you a, tr a tip for getting bottles for free. If you know anyone that owns a fine restaurant or, or any restaurant that serves wine, um, bar, if they, you know, a nice, a nice bar, upscale bar or something, may go through a lot of wine bottles. Um, contact them, especially if you know somebody there. Ask them if they will hold wine bottles for you. Um, put them in a box. Go there once a week, whatever. Pick them up. You can gain a lot of bottles very, very quickly, and they're free. Now, the downside is is that putting the you got to take the labels off of those and stuff like that, and it gets to be a pain to do that. But it is a way to get free bottles. Remember, wine costs on average about two dollars a bottle to make on your own and then another dollar or two for wine bottles so if you can save it's like half your a third to a half of your cost of making wine so um you know use that tip if you know any restaurants and it's a great way to save money next you're just going to put your wine bottles into your your sanitizing um your sanitizing bath basically Now I make my, I try to make my own labels for my bottles. Um, so you'll see a lot of these don't have labels on it because I basically, the way I put labels on is I put it on with um, glue stick. Um, then they come off really easy. But like I said, I'm not selling my wine. I am just, I'm drinking it. So I don't need to do any of that stuff. Now the reason you want hot water, one of the reasons you want a hot water is simply because um, you know there could be sediment in the bottom of the bottle and if there is from the previous wine you want to make sure you get that out so the hotter the water the better the, the easier it is um, but we're going to need to clean these as well and you need to make sure you get them perfectly clean you may want to use a brush I usually don't have to I usually just kind of fight with it um, and what I do what I'll do is I'll kind of take the wine bottle, put my hand on top and just shake it up vigorously. Um, that usually removes any of the sediment from the bottom. This stuff works really good, this uh, one step cleanser. It is a cleaner and cleanser. So uh, it does come out good. And if you're doing your own and you're drinking it yourself and things like that, get in the habit of rinsing out all the sediment so that actually the only thing you're really doing is sanitizing it actually. Um, it'll save a lot later. So, you know, don't just empty the bottle, actually rinse it out. Make sure you're checking through the bottom um, and you don't see any of that sediment. As long as you don't see the sediment, you're pretty good to go. So I'm gonna go through these few here. see this on camera but there's actually stuff in there that's not clean and as heavy as that is I may choose to throw this bottle but we'll see what it does if I let it soak that's quite a lot of sediment If 
you're getting your bottles for free, what do you care, really? All right, so I got a few done here. You see, I don't know if you can see me if I'm doing it off camera, but um, you do want to make sure you're holding it up you know, up to the light, bottle away so you can see what's in there. And actually, you want to really make sure you check well because this one actually has a piece of cork in it. So, I don't know if you can see that in there, but there's actually a piece of cork right here that's a little bit big that's not going to come out. Um, so this bottle's trash. Got to get rid of it. Um, this one had another dead spot in there. Um, had um, some sediment in there, tough. It's still not quite out, but I do see that it's coming out. It just you know it just needs to soak and the vigorous shaking does help so I'll leave it in there a bit and just kind of let it go all right so now that I have some bottles done um, you want to dry them. So I'm going to dry them by putting them on the tray, the bottle tray. Make sure you don't overload one side too much, as it will, it can tip over. It is pretty sturdy, but it can tip over now. Um, looks like there's about nine, is it one, two, three? Yeah, nine rungs and so this will hold 90 bottles, which is enough for three of the uh, kits. Kits come or make six gallons, and you get about 30 bottles. So if you fill this tray up, you will be able to do 90 bottles or three carboys or three types of wine. So uh, this tree is nice. We're only going to do one tonight, although I do have two flavors to bottle. But uh, tonight I'm only going to do one. So now I'm just going to go ahead and get the rest of these and get them on the tree. Fast forward through it so you can see it, and then we're going to get go. We're going to move on. So what has happened is, is um, recently I moved. Um, I collected these wine bottles years ago. I mean, years and years ago. I haven't made wine. Um, well, I very honestly, these are the, the wines that I'm going to be bottling. I'm going to be bottling this one tonight, I hope. Um, and I think that was, that's been in there for three years. It would have been ready probably after a year. It only gets better with age when you do it that way. Um, so I'm not really worried about it, but I haven't really done a lot of winemaking recently. Um, collected these bottles probably over 10 years ago. And the ones that I'm, I'm using now, they have the labels on them. So that means that I never use them. So they, the sediment's just been sitting in there for years, and I think it might have even turned to mold. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but I don't want to risk it. So these weren't rinsed out. This was this was from the restaurant. This is what I'm saying is is that you want to um, rinse out your wine bottles as you as you can. So I'm not going to risk it because as I look at this sediment in there, it's not coming out, and I'm afraid it could be moldy um or some mold in it so i'm not going to use it instead i'm going to just get rid of these uh bottles i'm going to use ones that i've used before so that i've rinsed them out and i know they're good 
Um, so we're going to keep going and getting those things all set up for you. But, you know, that, that's the thing is you got to be willing to just say, no, it's important. This is food. This is going to, you're going to actually ingest this. So it's important that you're comfortable that they are actually clean. So make sure you're doing that. Well, here's an interesting find. That one still has wine in it. Now, I'm sure it's vinegar. But let's set this one aside. Just because it's so interesting. I've never had. This is from 2010. This, is, this wine is as old as my car. And it's been sitting in the bottle. It, the, we're going to take a look at what this looks like. So stay tuned to the end of the video to find out what... 19 year old wine looks like that's been open. All right, so as I look at these bottles, I'm not real happy with the shape they're in. I'm not real happy. I mean, like I said, a lot of this stuff hasn't been around, hasn't been used in a decade or more. And it has sediment that doesn't want to come out. I'm a little worried about it um, really getting it out. It's Some sediments just really not come out. Some of them are fine because I, I rinse them out and the bottles are good and I can use those. But there's too many that I, I don't want to use. And I just recently moved and I got rid of a lot of my bottles. And I can, I'll just go to another restaurant and get some more bottles. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to go out and buy bottles. And I'm actually going to order them from Amazon. So I'll put a link to those down in the description. Um, so that I can get these done for you. And we'll continue the video as soon as they get here. Welcome back. I scrounged up a few more bottles, so I think I have enough that I can actually do uh, the red wine like I had wanted to last night. But um, we're going to get started. I found four more bottles, so we'll get them sterilized, and we'll get everything else sterilized so we're ready to go. So here we go. The next thing is, is your siphon. You need to make sure you get this sterile as well. So... This gets a little difficult. What I need to do is make sure I get this part of it completely sterilized. Basically, I dip in both ends and make sure I get water through the tube. So if I so take this and submerge the tube, water will go in to the tube and fill up the tube. Then I will lift the tube and let the water come out the bottom. So now, the inside is completely sterilized. So, now, I make sure I wash the outside with the sanitizer, the sanitary water, and get it all over as best I can. Okay, now, tubing sanitized and I'll hang this so that it all right so what I'll do now is I will actually take it and hang it on my tree just so that I can get let it dry out a little bit just get all the excess water out the other thing I'm gonna do is since I haven't used this in a really long time is I'm going to make sure that I sanitize the inside. Now what this does is you put the cork in here and you compress it down and you push it into the bottle. Uh, so the cork will be in there and I want to make sure I get this as clean as I can. Sterilize the quirks. So here's how you do that. 
Then, I'm going to use potassium metasulfite. Okay. Now, you don't need to use a lot of this, but you basically, these are the, the sulfurs. These are the... Um, All right, you don't have to use a lot of this. We're going to use potassium metasulfite. You don't have to use a lot of this. This is the sulfite. So uh, when you see wine, it says um, uh, contains sulfites. Well, that's what you don't want when you have homemade wine. That's what you're doing. It's not that you don't actually have it. It's that you have a lot less. That's one of the benefits. You can add more and you can make it commercially whatnot, but it's basically a preservative and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use like a half a teaspoon. I'm going to put it in there. And I'm just going to, and I'm just going to boil some corks. Okay? Now I need about 25. So I'm just going to throw 25 in there. I don't want to waste them. All right, so now I want to have these ready so that when I, I, bo I bottle the wine, they're ready to go. Because once I get the bo wine bottled, it won't take very long. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to uh, get these in there. Uh, get that boiling so that they're set to go. Uh, then we'll start bottling the wine and be done. Now, a couple things. Uh, the bottling phase, there's a couple things you want to do. One, make sure you have old clothes on. <clears throat> Your old clothes are... Uh, it's red wine that I'm working with today. So I want to make sure I have uh, uh, old clothes on. The other thing is I'm going to put something down the floor just to be sure that if anything um, spills that it, it gets caught. So here's our carboy. Now a couple things about the carboy. When you move it, there could be sediment in there depending on how many times you've racked it. And racking it means you took it out of one carboy and put it into another. Um, I know I before I moved I racked it so that I knew there would be no sediment in it this is pretty good we're gonna leave it as is and we're just gonna put it right into the bottles but when you're moving it make you don't want to stir up that sediment so if you have any sediment make sure you're very careful putting it to where you're going to start uh, bottling the way I bottle my wine is there's no real right or wrong way the only thing is, is the hot, you want to get the carboy off the ground and you want the bottles below it ideally in this actually I could put another I use old milk crate type uh, canisters and you, know, you could I could get it up here if I wanted but I really I worry when you start stacking them too tall this is going to get heavy it could get top heavy I can knock it over um, so I'm just going to leave it like this it'll be at this height but you could use a chair and you could do this on the floor there's different ways you can do it now as you do this you, there's a couple things you need to know and, and whatnot um, uh, you, when you're filling up the bottle, you don't want to fill it up all the way. You only want to fill it up to about here. Now, the reason is you want to leave room for the cork. You want to leave a little bit of room for air or pressure. What you don't want, my, okay, the corks are starting to boil, so we're doing good. They're almost ready. All right. <clears throat> Fill it up to about here. You want to leave room for the cork if you need to. You need to, you know, here's your cork. You just want to see how low your cork is. And you want, to, you want to leave a little bit of air there. You don't want it all the way down in there. You want a little bit of space in there. Uh, but you don't want too much. And you definitely don't want it below the shoulder. Uh, the more air, the more likely you could lose your, your wine. So I'm going to be filling up probably about this area right here, halfway up that neck. I don't want to go any further than halfway. So I'm going to take my, my siphon. Now, up top here, you'll see this is a, it, it actually allows air out and not in. There's water in here and it'll bubble through um, and a stopper. Uh, if I, when I do a video on showing you how to make one, I'll explain that further, but that's uh, an airlock. I'm just going to put that in there like that. 
going to throw this into a bottle so it doesn't get contaminated. Okay, and in. But before I do too much, there is um, something we need to do. And that is get a glass. Because I don't want to bottle all this if there's something wrong with it, which there could be. All right, so this up here, some of them will have this, some of them don't. Um, this just kind of is a protection, extra layer of protection. But you're going to take off this air lock here. And you're going to blow in there to create pressure, which makes it come out into this. Now, because I have it so high up here, it should stop. I really want it to stop. And there's other ways. I'll show you as I do it. But I just want to fill a wine glass and see how it tastes. Make sure it's still good and that I didn't leave too much air in here because that's a lot of air. All right, so I'm just going to blow in there. Once I bring this up above the bottle, above the wine and above there, it'll just stop. So I'm going to add some... Stop the flow. Smells good. Very good. Doesn't need to be bottled though, but it is good. This tastes very good. So, I'm going to start with a clear bottle. Now, again, Typically, a red wine will go in a darker bottle and a white wine goes in a lighter bottle, light green or white or clear. But no matter what, I always fill the first one with a clear bottle so that I can take a look at the sediment. You can see how it is. You can just see stuff about the wine as it, as it goes. So we're going to go ahead and start this. It doesn't go in the first time, just hit it again. So, um, that's one set. So what I'm going to do now, just grab a bottle, shove it in there, and you can see we're ready to go. So, now, what I do is um, I would have another one ready. So I would have another one ready, but since it's all set up, what I'm going to do is... Um, well, I'm just going to put everything else in here. So as you can see, that, that's a clear bottle. And you can see how far I fill it. The cork's going to come down to about here. So I'll have a little bit of airspace like you should, and that's about it. That's a perfectly full bottle of wine. So my ports have cooled down a bit, um, and now I can at least touch them. But what I'm going to do is, again, with the, the machine here, is I'm going to stick them in there, compress it down as much as I can, and then squeeze it in. Now, I use these um, carriers because they're plastic, they're strong, they're not boxes, they're not going to fall apart. Bottles aren't going to go out the side of them. Um, but I'm going to show you what I, how I, this works. So... Put it in there, push it up, the handle will go up, squeeze it tight to compress it, put it on top of a bottle, push it down in nice and tight, and there you go. I hope you can see that. But it is perfectly in there, flush, ready to go. 
And I'm gonna leave that in there so that it keeps everything nice and tight. But I do notice I overfilled the bottle. We gotta do something about that. So, huh, more wine for me. There we go. Uh, I think I'll just, I'll just drink that right now. Mmm, yum. All right. So it's really, the synthetic corks are a lot easier to use. They compress easier. They, um, they go in easier. The natural corks are more difficult. Um, it's just that this machine, it's easier to use the synthetics. And look at how easy this is. Three bottles done. That's okay, can use a cork. Make sure you put the, the cork all the way in the device, otherwise you won't squeeze the whole thing. Uh, you see right there, it's not all the way in and it's kind of bowing out. You don't want to do that, you want to make sure it's all the way down and so flush so you can get it in there nice and easily. Oh. It didn't go all the way down. Kind of difficult to do it after the fact, but it can be done. Well, that one's probably just going to have to stick up a little bit. That'll have to be a bottle I drink. We'll take that one to a party or give it away. <laughs> you can also pull it out and put another one in. All right, there you go, these are done. Now, I haven't, oh, another one. I haven't told you what, um, what type of grape this is that I've used, because honestly, I don't really remember. Another one's a little too full. I bought these, this juice, I wanna say at least two and a half years ago. It might've been as much as three and a half years ago. And it's been sitting in the cardboard ever since. Not ideal, but that's okay. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I should have, when I had that much room on top, I really should have um, topped it off with a, another bottle of wine, but I didn't have any. And it was always like, oh, I'll bottle it, I'll bottle it. And it was in there longer than I wanted it to be. But I think, I think it's a Ruby Cabernet. That's what I think it is. Just a little bit too full. Darn, I gotta do something about that. More wine for me. Another reason you want a bottle of wine with it sitting around. Plan on keeping most of these wine this one. Uh, that one I might pill out. That's a little too hard. Oh, I'm gonna have to show you something. Yeah. All right, this one. This one didn't go all the way in. If you look, there's the bottom of the cork and there's the wine. This is too full and that's why I got that problem. I couldn't say, and you can even look, that keep, that's coming out. The wine is actually under pressure and pushing it out. 
I mean, I can, I could actually pull that out with my hand. So I'll take some out. Now I have, I can just dip that right back in that hot water and sanitize it. Because my hands are sanitary anyway from doing all this. I've been in all this stuff. So there we go. Perfect. That's, so again, that's why you need that space. So there you have it. I've got uh, 23 bottles of wine. Uh, that 23 bottles of wine cost me 50 bucks. So a little over two bucks a bottle and I've got wine. Now there are some things you can do to finish it. For instance, um, oh, we got one more. We got 24 because I pulled that out to make room. So I'm going to have to do that, but I'll do that after we're done. There are ways to finish bottles. So for instance, um, you can put your, um, let me show you this one. This was actually done with a wedding that I was at. Um, I shot this, this couple's wedding and they did homemade wine and they gave me a bottle. This was their favor. Um, so they had their own labels made. Now you can have them made or you can do them yourself. I personally do my own labels and the reason I do them myself is because I do them on regular paper, not sticker paper. Uh, and then I also put it on with glue sticks. And the reason I do that is it comes off so much easier. Um, it just really helps out because I reuse the bottles over and over again. Um, so that, that's why I do it that way. Then there's also these tops here. Um, I actually have these, but I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna finish these bottles off or not. I don't know if they'll be around long enough. But you actually put these caps on it and then shrink wrap it and you can give it that professional look just like you buy in a store very, very, very easily. Um, so if we uh, do decide to do the, uh, the wine making video, I'll take you through that whole process including the bottling and I'll go ahead and show you how to finish it and everything off and I have some ideas but I gotta check laws on if I can do this. I might do a giveaway um, for those bottles of wine. Um, so let me know if you want to do it. Uh, you have to be 21 years old. Uh, I'll have to check on shipping homemade wine. The rules will be they have to be within the continental United States and things of that nature. Over 21, you'll have to provide age, proof of age and things like that of some sort. I'll have to see exactly what I can do, but maybe I'll make a, a, bottle, a set of bottles of wine and give them away. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and then the bell to be notified when we're making more videos, and we'll see you next time. All right, Social Adventurers, remember I told you about that wine from 2010 that I found? All right, there's about a half a glass in there. I'm really interested to see what it looks like and if it smells. Now, wine turns to vinegar over time. Now this was sealed and with the amount of air in here, I'm thinking it should turn into vinegar. It doesn't smell bad. It smells like wine. Not really red anymore. It's kind of brown. Now I'm sure someone out there is saying, but wine ages, you know, turns fine with age. And some wines do. But here's the thing is that when air gets to wine, that's what it, when it turns to vinegar. So that's not um, what you want. I mean, even there's bottles of wines that are 2,000 years old or something like that. And um, you can't open it, you can't test it, you can't do anything with it. But once it hits the air, what happens is, is most wines, when it hits the air, it'll be great for a few seconds. And after that, it's not going to be very good. But... What I do notice about this wine is, and I don't know if you can see it in there, you might be able to see it on the edge. Um, it's got a lot of sediment in it. And so most likely what I think this was is that this was the last bottle um, and I just got sick of drinking it because when that sediment really doesn't taste good, it, it kind of, um, it, it's, you just don't want it. Um, and it kind of spoils the wine and stuff. And I was probably drinking it because it was the only bottle. Um, so that's why I think it was there. But this, this bottle has a, a history. Uh, back in 2010, I was a member of a group called the LV Tweetup. 
Twitter followers. Tweet up was a thing. It was basically a meetup with Twitter followers. Um, we local, you meet at a bar, you have a few drinks, you network, you have a good time. And uh, I was put on by a friend of mine, Mike uh, Andrino, who is very big on social media even today doing things. But he organized the LV tweet up and we together organized a winemaking class. So uh, this was myself and four other people, um, Black Forest Deli, Mandrino, Rover Mom, and Matt 2397. We all got together and we made a batch of wine. We all took a probably about five bottles home, five or six. Um, so that's where this bottle came from. So I was probably drinking it, got sick of it with all that sediment. I'm trying so you can see it. I don't know if you'll see it in there, but, um, oh man, it, it smells like wine, but what is it? I'm really curious. I really, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not bold enough to actually drink it, but Ooh. Oh, it's vinegar. It's definitely vinegar. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, well, it was interesting. So I can say I, I tasted 19-year-old wine. 